Hello friends, welcome to another exciting episode of Dating with Max, where we use our knowledge of Max to try to get dates uh, for some, some sad reason. Um, before we even get started, can we talk about how great the non-technical stack exchange is? I've become completely addicted to these long-winded and precise answers to questions that don't need long-winded and precise. Like there's a, there's a, a, a the best by far is the Dungeons and Dragons section where like there was one the other day that was like, oh, I have an amulet of protection from plants, but I want to make a mixed salad. So do I do a saving throw? And then 700 pages on whether or not you do a saving throw to make a salad, just the greatest stuff of all time. Um, that's not what we were talking about uh, today. We're talking about today. So we're gonna do, it's time for part three of this um, plenty of fish in the sea simulator. Um, so let's see, where were we when last we left off? When last we left off, we had a node application over here, uh, npm install. By the way, if you've been trying to download this and run it and it hasn't been working, you may find that you need to do an npm install before you do node index.js, uh, that to actually get the chance and node OSC packages that you need to make it work. Anyway, so the node app is running, it's listening on port 3333 and sending to port 3334, and that means that back in this uh, maxi patch, um, I can bang over here and get the name of an Italian gentleman that appears here in the world, Duccio, or Duccio Scopetani, Scopetani this guy. Um, so, that's where we were. We have uh, one sea and one fish. Um, but it's not exactly what we, it's not exactly what we want, is it? I mean, we really need to get just the tiniest bit further. We need, when people say there's plenty of fish in the sea, um, the idea is that there's a, a profusion of possibilities, of opportunities, of, of chances to begin again. So we don't want just one person, we want an ocean of people. Um, so let's figure out how to make that happen. Um, I wanted to condense this down into just one part, but unfortunately it's going to have to be split into two. And, and part four uh, is going to be really exciting. And part three, we're going to spend most of it um, indexing into a two-dimensional matrix. And maybe you're thinking that doesn't sound that exciting, um, but you think all parts of uh, uh, getting people to go out with you are exciting? It takes work. You've got to put in the time and you have to learn how to, there's one thing I've learned, it's that if you don't know how to index into a matrix, uh, you're never gonna have, you're never gonna get anybody to go out with you. It's just a, it's just a fact. Um, all right, so I got a bit distracted by that rant. Uh, let's actually make this happen. Um, first, let's fix a couple small issues here. Uh, let's make this window, let's make this window floating so that it doesn't get in the way, or rather, so it, uh, we can see it while we work. And I'm just gonna shrink it down and put it up here. Uh, next thing I wanna do, this text, so you can see here the grid shape is, has like a black background and the text is gray and all that stuff. Let's fix that really quick. Um, the background is black because grid shape by default doesn't do any blending. Uh, oh, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant to do. Grid shape by default doesn't have any blending. Um, so we need to grab this grid shape. I'm gonna delete this position and scale here. And I'm also gonna bring all this over here. Let's move this up, move this down. Um, I wanna do a whole different uh, video series where I just take really tangled patches and untangle them. There was, a, there was one or two um, videos where I did that and I thought it was really, I find it very relaxing. And maybe, maybe it'd be like a visual ASMR kind of thing. Um, that went with doing that. Uh, okay, grid shape, and this should be at color one, 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 at depth, enable zero, at blend, at blend, enable one. And the, okay, there we go. Uh, this, the blending um, makes it so that the alpha channel is actually respected. Depth enabling does something, presumably, and setting the color to one, 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 one just means that the texture that we're painting onto this um, grid shape won't be affected by the color of the grid shape itself. Uh, last thing I needed to do was take all this nonsense, or two other, two things remaining to do. First thing is taking all this stuff and I'm just gonna compress it down and call this patcher skybox or something like that. Throw that over here. And I also wanted to, okay, so this JITGL handle that's controlling the skybox, you'll notice that I can rotate the skybox but not the text. 
Um, JGL handle doesn't actually need to be connected to an object. You can just do something like send handle and it will send its updates to whatever objects happen to be on the receiving end of that, of that send. So this skybox I can take and do something like uh, receive handle, send this to the skybox, and then also move this receive handle down to this grid shape. And now the text and the world will rotate together. And that's, I mean, that's basically good. That's, that's for sure, definitely 100% good. Um, all right, so now onto the meat of the problem, onto the big task at hand. We've got one name, we want tons of names. How do we do it? Well, the naive thing to do would be to take this JITGL texture and this JITGL grid shape, put them in a poly tilde or something, and then just throw a bunch of objects into the scene. Um, we can do better than that, and the way that we can do better is by using one big texture as opposed to lots of little textures, and for each grid shape, just saying which part of the bigger texture to use. Um, I'm going to do this by using this property of jit.gl. or sending to jit.gl.texture the subtext matrix um, message, which overwrites just one part of the texture. Um, and then in the next part, we'll look at how to make the grid shape actually um, or make the grid shape actually draw from one part of the, the texture. Um, so to make this happen, uh, let's get this out of the way first. Let's take this texture and just make it big. Let's do jitgl texture at uh, dim 4096 4096 should be big enough for our purposes. And we'll also do at adapt zero so that this texture doesn't get over, uh, the dimensions of the texture don't get overwritten by new matrices. Also make a load bang here and make a, oh, no, 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 no. Do a jit dot matrix for char 4096 4096. This is a big empty matrix, and this will just clear out this um, texture whenever we load up this patch. Uh, and there it is, there's the big empty texture. Um, you can't see it, of course, because the alpha channel is, is zero. Um, so now what we want to do is, as I said before, send a subtext matrix message to this JITGL texture. Um, so if you've ever, you know, for whatever reason, connected a, a jitter cable to a message box like this, you've noticed that it's just sending this matrix, jit underscore matrix, and then the name. Um, so what I'm going to do is use the, that, that means that we can just treat whatever is flowing along that wire as if it were a regular max message. Um, so what we can do is use an object like substitute and pass in the arguments jit underscore matrix and subtext underscore matrix and send these to jitgl texture or rather send the matrix to jitgl texture after it's already passed through this through this object uh, sort of running out of space here i'm going to take uh da, 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 da. i'm going to do i'm going to move these down a little bit and then move all this up Get rid of this helper text and cool. There we go. Um, so that's uh, that settles that. Now that will tell this texture to only use one part of this um, matrix, but we also, or rather, to only write to one part of itself when it gets a new matrix. But we also need to set the uh, destination dimensions, the left, top, right, and bottom of the rectangle within this texture that we want to write to. Um, so first, to enable this texture to work that way. We have to come in here and do at dest dim, uh, use dest dim, use dest dim, use dest dim one. And that of course makes a new texture, so we gotta hit this load bang again. Anyway, um, so that enables destination dimensions for this texture. Now we just need to actually set them. So in other words, we want to, every time, here's the, here's the overall tech, uh, task. Uh, here's a frame for the overall task. Every time a new name comes in, move to the next cell and then write the name into that cell. So to do that, we need to know both the number of cells and then ultimately the dimensions of each cell before we write to it. Uh, so first things first, let's just get the cell. I'm gonna add a new bang in here so that before um, actually doing the writing, we can pick where to write, and then I'll throw in a counter. And this counter, of course, should count from zero up to the number of cells in this matrix. So how many cells are there? Uh, well, how, depends on how many rows and columns we pick. And however many rows and columns we pick, it's gonna be the number of rows uh, multiplied by the number of columns. 
Because this matrix that we're writing to is 4096 by 4096 pixels, and the text that we're using is 1024 by 102 pixels, I'm gonna suggest that we go with four columns and 40 rows. But because um, we are max experts, uh, we're going to do this uh, in a slightly more, uh, we're gonna make it so that we could, if we wanted to, go back and change the number of rows and columns later. And here's how I suggest we do this. I suggest we do this by making a subpatcher here and calling it calculations. And the idea is that this is gonna be the subpatcher wherein are contained all the little calculations we need to do to actually um, position or figure out the, the position of the, the cell that we wanna to write to. Um, so let's make two integer boxes in this subpatcher. And this first one, I'm gonna change its scripting name to columns. I'm going to activate parameter mode and set the initial value to four, four columns. And this guy, the one that's going to be rows, we'll make the scripting name rows, enable parameter mode, enable initial and set the initial value to 40. Um, and also this one needs to be set to four and this one to 40. Now, um, the whole reason for doing this uh, is that if we have these guys, um, if we have the uh, number of rows and number of columns saved like this, then we can use um, patter objects to get the contents of these guys without having to have these objects actually send their values um, to other parts in this, in this same patch. So what I mean by that is now if we do something like patter uh, at bind to columns and this one patter at bind to rows, then anytime um, we, the number of columns and the number of rows changes, it's gonna go through these patter objects. And what's more, if we bang on these patter like so, uh, no, let's try that again, there we go. If we bang on this patter like so, then these can fetch the number of columns and number of rows from these objects. And what that means we can do is throw in say, a uh, poc like this, and then do a multiply like this. And now anytime we want, we can get the number of, uh, so we can get the cell count. We can get the number of cells anytime we want just by hitting this bang. Um, so here's our send cell count. I'm gonna make a receive cell count back out here in the main patch and connect it up to this part of the counter. Now, um, I know it's a little bit uh, annoying that we have to use a send down here. So we're using this patter thing to kind of get around using send and receives, um, but then we're also using send out here. Um, the thing is that if these things are in a sub patcher, then to address them from the main patch, you have to do a little bit more work and oh, sick, there's a dude in the truck across the street who's brushing his teeth and looking right at me as he does it. It is a very weird and very intimate moment I'm having with this man. I've never looked at a man in the eyes while he brushes his teeth before. Absolutely fascinating. And he spit into the street and the world turns on its axis. Um, so the point being that, uh, what were we talking about? So the point being that, yeah, you have to use the send and receive to send back out to the main patch because otherwise you have to do something like patter, at bind to uh, calculations, colon, colon, cell count, or whatever, and nobody wants to do that, I think you'll agree. I'm also gonna make the border to this calculations thing, like a lovely gold color, like this, because it's important. I'll put it up here too, because it's important. Cool, so that gives us the number of cells in this uh, counter. So now we want the position of each cell, and for this we have to do maybe a bit more calculation. We'll move this counter up here temporarily in preparation for all this calculation that we're about to do. Um, so we need to find the left, top, right, and bottom. The left is just uh, whichever column we're in multiplied by the number of uh, rows in the, uh, multiplied by the number of columns in the, uh, sorry, it's whatever column we're in multiplied by the width of the column. I was thinking about the guy brushing his teeth. Um, so back out here in calculations, I'm gonna make another couple calculations here. This one here is just gonna be this is gonna look ridiculous, but we're gonna do patter at um, bind to columns. And another one here, patter at bind to rows. And then this is just going to calculate 
I know this doesn't look like much of a calculation, but this one's calculating the number of rows and this one's calculating the number of columns. And the whole reason to do this is so that we can hit these, um, we can hit these bangs to recalculate these values. And also because of the way pattern works, um, these will send automatically when we first uh, load this patch. Um, so back out here, we'll make a receive columns. So to figure out which column we're in, uh, we take the cell index. So this is going to index like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, so we just take the counter, the value, uh, index value coming through here and take the modulo or the remainder after division by the number of columns. So this value is going to count, this value is going to count 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera, et cetera. Um, put a thing here so you can see that. And then we're also going to make something here that's also receiving columns, but now we'll do integer division to get the, um, the, the row that we're at. So let's just hit these bangs to make sure those values are in. And now every time I hit this button, you should see, so this is counting up just like I said. So this is the first column, second row, uh, first column, first row, first column, sorry, uh, third column, second row. Uh, fourth column, second row, and then uh, when we get up to a number divisible by four, it rounds back down again and increments the, the number of columns. So that's what's happening, or increments the number of rows, sorry. So that's the column and row that we're at. Now we just need to multiply that by the width of the, or sorry, divide the width of the whole thing um, by the number of columns to get the actual column width. So what is the width of the whole thing? Well, it's the width of this texture down here that we're ultimately writing to. Um, so I want to get this, uh, get these dimensions and send it somewhere so that we can use it. Um, so I'm just going to first come into this calculations thing and make a couple more integer boxes here. And this is uh, what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to call this one um, width and turn on parameter mode and set its initial value to 4096. And this one, oh, it was gonna, I'm gonna call height. Let's also turn on parameter mode and make its initial value 4096. Um, and then what I wanna do is take these values and just as we did here to calculate the number of columns and rows, I'll make a couple more, ah, nope make a couple more of these things to calculate the number of uh, the width as well as the height and we'll send width and we'll send height. And all I'm going to do with this is um, make a receive width and a receive height and we'll make a poc dim ii. And so whenever the width or the height changes, it will update the uh, dimensions of this texture and also of this matrix. So that will make sure that we uh, set the size of the matrix to be whatever the width and height happen to be. So basically this calculation, these are all the um, uh, parameters that are determining um, the dimensionality, so all of the, the actual uh, attributes that we would use to, um, to set the dimensions of these matrices are being stored here in this calculation. The, the sort of master version of that variable is here in this um, calculation sub-batch. So there's the width and here's the height. So all this was just so we could calculate the width of a particular column uh, and that's actually pretty easy to do. We just do make a pattern at bind to columns and also a pattern at bind to width and then pock these together and uh, these are actually backwards. Let's do it like this, width columns. So we take the width, we divide by the number of columns and we get out here is the column width. And while we're here, um, also let's put a bang here so we can calculate this whenever we like. And while we're here, I'm also gonna just take this and duplicate it. Um, 
and do the same thing, only instead of with columns and width, we'll do it with height and rows. And this is the row height. Cool. So back out in this main patch now, if I make a receive column uh, width and a receive row height, then this column, um, the column that we're in, multiplied by the column width, this should give us the leftmost value of um, whatever the, the left part of our rectangle. And the row height multiplied by the row we happen to be in is of course going to be um, the top part of the rectangle that we want to draw into. So there's the left and the top, and then to get the right and the bottom, we just add the column width to whichever column we happen to be in, and to get the um, bottom, we add the row height to whichever uh, row we happen to be in. And this, uh, can I move things in such a way to make this easier to see? Yeah, for sure. This is going to be the uh, left, so, oh my lord, reading from left to right, uh, wait, I have to actually push the column width and row height into this. So that's why these bangs are here, so I can just hit these. And now when I hit this button, so this is for the, um, the second column and the third row. That starts at 1,024 pixels in and goes all the way to 2,048 pixels and goes at the t from the top uh, 204 pixels to the bottom 306, get out of here Creative Cloud, um, 306 pixels. And um, if I turn on, if I do, uh, if I throw a couple of packs in here, so we do pack and pack, and then for this guy, prepend uh, source, no, destination dim start, and for this one, prepend destination dim end and connect these up to this texture every time we hit this bang it should oh my are you seeing what i'm seeing right now in this uh matrix it's just doing exactly what we want and stepping through this texture and every time we hit this bang writing a name to a new cell in this matrix is that not the most exciting thing you've ever seen in your whole adult life? Um, the one, uh, you will notice here, this one is a bit slanted. Um, that's because I made a mistake. Um, people make mistakes, it's uh, part of life. Um, the problem is that um, the last, uh, the, the destination end values here are inclusive. Um, so in other words, if you write all the way from say column zero to column uh, 1024, uh, that includes column 1024. So instead of writing, let's use easier numbers. If you're writing from uh, column zero all the way to column 1000, you're actually writing uh, to 1001 columns because it includes both zero and uh, 1000. Um, all that to say that down, uh, what we actually need to do to fix this is down here before we send these off to destination dim end, we just need to subtract one from both of them. Uh, so we can do that with a vexper object dollar i minus one uh, at scalar mode one. So that is the vexper, the long-winded vexper object that is doing nothing more than subtracting one from both this number and this number. And now let's throw a metro in here, say metro thirty-three, and just watch those names fill up. This is exactly what I've always dreamed of, a sea of Italian gentlemen that I could just get lost in. Um, you'll notice once in a while that one of these cells fails to load. I'm not too concerned about that. It's just a, you know, asynchronous nonsense thing. So there we go. There's a, <clears throat> wow, there's a big table of names. Um, not particularly exciting, but uh, in part four, when we make these names uh, float, in uh, aquatic splendor through this underwater world of possibility, um, it's all going to be, the, the preparation will definitely be worth the payoff, as it so often is both in Max and in um, Amorous Encounters. So I think, you know, last thing, <laughs> that's cool, last thing that we should do is just take all, not the counter, but all of this 
and we can just call this um, calc dest dim. And then all those values will need to be set. Oh, hey. All those values, oh my life. All those values will need to be set again. Um, so I'm just gonna move things around a bit. There we go. All these values that we use to calculate these things will need to be set again. So you can just come back into calculations and hit all these bangs. Should probably make one bang to rule them all. And now everything should be working uh, okay again. Um, and incidentally, when you go full screen, the reason it clears the texture is because it actually creates a whole new graphics context from scratch. And the old texture doesn't exist in the new world. Um, of this uh, full screen environment. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting and informative, even if it is just, you know, stepping through a matrix. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you in the final and exciting conclusion to the Plenty of Fish uh, Dating with Max series. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.